In earlier uh, video in this series of digital logic, we did talk about um, uh, minimization using the simplified algebraic reduction. And even though the simplified algebraic reduction is great and it's uh, systematic and computers and can use it very effectively, for humans, we want to take advantage of our ability to pattern match things. And um, in order to do that, we have to graphically represent um, the relationships uh, that we use to minimize. And that particular relationship I'm talking about is uh, the theorem called the adjacency theorem, which basically says if I have a b and have next to it a b naught, since as long as a is true, b is irrelevant, we can minimize that as an a. This is really the fundamental theorem we use both in SAR, uh, the, uh, the systematic algebraic reduction, as well as this new method. This new method is more graphical, and the name is referred to as the Carnot after the person who came up with this Carnot map. Um, this was came up about the 1940s, 1950s, and then more, most of the time we just simply say K map, which is the a shortened name for Carnot map. Okay, so before we get too far in this video, what we want to do is we want to introduce the concept of how do we organize the um, function in a map that allows us to see all the places where uh, these kind of situation exists when one variable is just implement uh, complemented so we can get rid of it. So let's go ahead and start with a simple function. Let's say the simplest function we can have has two variables, a and b, and then the function is here. Let's say uh, for 0, 0, it is 1, for 0, 1, 0, for, for um, 1, 0 is 1, and for 1, 1 is 0. Let's say that's the function we are looking at. And then uh, in here, it's kind of hard to see who's next to whom. But if I were to redraw this truth table in a k-map, and this is basically what the k-map looked like, um, and then you have an a and b. So this is basically says that the rows, first row is a is equal to 0, second row a is equal to 1, b first column is equal to 0, second column is equal to 1. So for example, when I'm looking at this piece, it is a zero, b is zero. So this is kind of what we call a min term zero. That's number is referring to the min term value. And when I'm looking over here, a zero, b is one. So the min term value I'm looking at is zero, oh, I'm sorry, one here. And down here, I'm looking at one and zero. So this is min term two, and this is min term three. So all I have to do is to translate this to here. All I have to do is basically look at 0, 0, and whatever the value of f is, just bring it to here. And then we look at 0, 1, that's min term 1, and whatever the value is here, we're going to bring it over here. And on and on. x1, 2, and 3. And you can notice now that and this is what we're going to take advantage of, is that horizontally, every two, they're next to each other. For these two are next to each other. These are neighbors of each other. These up and down are neighbors of each other. These are neighbors of each other. So that's that visually helps us. And then later on, when we talk about minimization, we're going to take advantage of this feature. I'm going to continue on kind of laying this out. So if the two variable was relatively simple. Let's go ahead and take a look at a little more complex one. Let's say we have three variables, a, b, c, with a function. So in this case, we're going to have eight possibilities that uh, we're just going to write out. And let's say this function has one here, one here, one here. And here and here, let's say, and the rest are zero. Okay, so now, now we got to kind of think about how would you take three of these and turn them into something like a K map that we did for the two variables. 
So first of all, we need to have eight squares. We can create this eight square by either drawing it like so, or we can draw it this way. Both, both ways are acceptable. And they have eight, and we're gonna get eight vertically this way. So for this, let's focus on this one, and hopefully you'll see pretty quickly how you can do the other way. But if you do it this way, we say A, B is on, the, the rows are marked by the value of A, B, the possibilities are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. I'm sorry, I'm gonna write it the way we write the truth table, then I'm gonna come back and correct this. 0, 1 for C. So that basically says the column, this is the zero column, C equal to zero on this column, C equal to one on this column, and on and on. Now, our goal is when we do a K-map, our goal is to make sure that every square is, which is next to the other square, um, not diagonally, but up and down and sideways, it's neighbor of each other. Unfortunately, this is not because look, we are changing the two variables. So therefore, these two cannot be combined or done anything to because they are two variables or parts. They won't follow the rule that we came up here or the, the, the adjacency theorem will work on them. So how are we going to fix that? The way we're going to fix this is we're actually going to, instead of counting 0, 1, 2, we're going to count 0, 1, 3, and then back to 2. Now look at that. Now in here, on one variable change from here to here, one variable change. So we're keeping to our way. So great. So now when we come back here, this is going to be min term 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, now see the 4 is down here, 5 is down here, a 6 is here, and 7 is here. So. That's one little tricky thing you gotta remember. This way of writing is called gray code. You may have remembered that from earlier videos. So these are, we write them in gray, gray code. And the unique thing about gray code is that's just one variable changes at a time. Okay, so now, um, so now that I can take this function and put it in here, uh, let's use a different color. So at zero, it's zero. At one, it's one. At 2 is 0, at 3 is 1, at 4 is 1, 5 is 1, 6 is 1, and 7 I haven't written, so we'll just add 7 to here and make it 0, 7 is 0. Now every square up and down again and sideways are neighbors of each other. That means one variable change at a time. So you could, you could transpose this. Let's do for completeness, let's do this one too. So this one, the row A, is 0 and 1, row 1 is 0, row B A is equal to 1, and B and C goes in here. Again, we're going to do the gray code. Remember, this goes 1, 1, and then back to 1, 0. Pay attention to these. That For people who are studying Carnot map, that's one of the most common problems they run into. So, so in this case, this is going to be min term 0, this is going to be min term 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, and seven and six, and in this case, it would be zero, one, zero, one, 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 zero. So that's uh, that's another way of drawing it. And finally, this we're kind of hitting the limit of uh, Carnot map. Once you get into about uh, four variable, uh, that's pretty much the end of it. It gets pretty difficult to. Uh, kind of create uh, for five variable or six variables. So let's just, we are here, let's go ahead and take a look at the four variable one. In this case, we would have A, B, C, and D. And the variables would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and on and on and on. 
Hopefully I didn't miss any. But let's go let's go back and check it real quick. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, looks, uh, let's see, 10. Okay, look like I missed one right here. 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, great. And then the function is here. And uh, uh, function A, B, C, D. Okay, uh, let's say this is 1, this is 1, this is 0, 0, 1, 1, and the rest are zeros just to make it simpler. Okay, so what we'll do is much like we did before, we need to kind of put this in a map where all the neighbors are shown in here. And neighbors being the squares where only one variable is changing. So this is a K map for a four variable, so you're gonna, on rows are defined by the first two variables and the columns of the second, and we're gonna write them in gray code, so it's gonna be zero, zero, one, 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 zero, 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 one, 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 zero. So this is a K map, and then when you look at it, the min term zero is here, min term one, three, two, Four, five, seven, six, eight, nine, eleven, ten. Because of the gray code, we jump around. Uh, Twelve, thirteen, fifteen, fourteen, and as you can see, all of these, the the true table can be represented here. For example, for this variable, um, for this function, we will have a one in here, a one in here. 0, 0 here, 4 is 1, 5 is 1, 0, 0, everything else we said was 0. So now we have carnival. Now if you look at it, these are all neighbors of each other because only one variable changes, right? Same here. If you look at it from here to here, the only variable that changes is D. Now one thing that's kind of tricky is this edge and these edge are connected in a sense if you look at it because if you look at it a b f these these two 10 and 2 are neighbors because the only thing that changes between 10 and 2 is a and the same thing is that the, the min term 2 and min term 0 are neighbor as well because the only thing that changes in this case is c so when we come to grouping things we got to pay attention to that so that was the fourth one okay um, so, uh, let's see if there's any, that pretty much is, that's a pretty good uh, representation of um, um, Carnot maps. And um, typically, if somebody gives us a function, let's, uh, gives us a function uh, to minimize the Carnot map, um, the first thing we do is we'll have to um, write them in a truth table just to make sure we have all the min terms and then once we have done uh, that and then we'll go ahead and put those values in the Carnot map and then we'll try to um, look for large minimize the function from there uh, we're gonna leave the actual process of minimization to the next uh, next video